All right, boys and girls, now that we've learned how to do a little bit of form, it's time for us to learn how to do value, uh, basically shading. Now, if you've never done value, if you don't know what shading is, it's basically how you, something looks lighter or darker. It's talking about shadows as well. So if you, even if you're looking at my hand, you'll see that as I pick my hand up, there's all kinds of shadows underneath my hand. You also see that some of my hand is very light, while some of my hand right here appears to be very dark. That just depends on where light is coming from and where light is hitting something. Wherever you see light hitting, like if you have a light coming from up above, then you'll usually see something that is up above light. Anything that's underneath is going to be very, very dark. You can see that the underneath of my thumb is dark. Now, what's the best way to understand that? Believe it or not, you can actually do this with crayons. Basically, to make something very, very dark, all you have to do is push down really, really hard with your crayon. And you can see that that's a fairly dark purple that I've got right there. The thing to remember is you don't have to keep it dark. We're going to make what's called a value scale. A value scale means that I'm looking at a color that is dark as it gets to light and everything in between. So it's going to slowly, slowly, slowly change from very dark to very light. So here I am, dark, dark, dark. I'm going to start pushing a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, 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 until I get to as light as I possibly, possibly can. That is what we call a value scale it slowly changes from one value to the next. Now you can see that you can do that with crayons. You can also try to do this with watercolors. I'll get some water. I'll take most of that water off, and I'm going to get a whole bunch of paint, as much as I can. I don't want as much water. Remember, when we want to, when we want to try to make colors very dark, we're going to use less water and more paint, as much as I possibly can. So I'm going to get a bunch of blue. I'm going to come over here, and that looks pretty dark. Maybe a little more here. So I'm going to get very, very dark with this blue. And now I'm going to start bringing it out. As I start coming out, I'm going to get a little bit of water, but I'm not going to get any more paint. And I'm going to start coming down. See, it's starting to get lighter and lighter. Now, let's get a little more water and keep coming down. Get a little more water until you have almost no paint left in the brush. And then when you're painting with nothing left, that's a pretty good value scale. So that's basically how you do it. If you want to get really, really fancy, you can wait for this to dry, get a little more paint here, come back and make that really, really dark, and let it slowly, slowly get lighter. So that's how you make a value scale. If you can, I'd like to see you make about two or three of these with paint. If you don't have any paints, then try and do two or three of these with crayon, but I want you to put them all over the place. Now, if you've finished doing your value scales, we're going to move on to why we need value scales. We're going to make a value scale because we're going to put these values on our objects. So right here, I'm going to put a nice, big, old rectangular prism. And then over here, I'm going to put a nice, big, old cylinder. So I got the two forms that we talked about last time. Now, how in the world do I color these in? Well, first, you have to know where your light is coming from. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that my light is coming from right here. And yes, it is important to know where your light's coming from because that's going to matter when we start putting on the values. So a rectangular prism is always going to have three values, light, medium, and dark. So if light's coming over here, the top is probably going to be the lightest one. So let's get some more of that blue. I'm only going to use a little bit of blue, and I'm going to put very little paint in here. I got mostly water, and you can tell how light that is. I colored it all in one color, and I'm done. Now the next side is going to be medium. I think that this one that's far away is going to be dark, so this one's going to be medium. So I'm going to pick a little more blue up, and you can tell that that has gotten darker. Darker. Now, be very careful. You don't want to touch this color right here, because if you do, then your blue is going to bleed into there, and it's going to get much, much darker in there, which where we don't want it. We want this to be a nice medium, and we want this one to stay light. So light, medium, and this one is going to be very dark. Don't even need any water. Get as much paint as you can. You want this to be very dark, and you're going to come in here and make this extremely dark, as much paint on the brush as you possibly can. You can do the same thing, of course, with a crayon. It's probably easier with crayon, but that's basically how you make this. Now, if you really want to be fancy, like I said, you can go ahead and wait for this to dry. And when it's dry, you can always come back and add even more paint to this side to make it look especially dark. Now, the real trick is the cylinder. Cylinder is easier to draw, but it's harder to paint. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. 
Here I have a flat face and it was light. Well, here I have a flat face. So I'm going to make that one very light. Now, the thing that makes a cylinder difficult is this curved face. Because it's curved, that means it's not going to be light, medium, and dark. That means it's going to be dark and it's going to slowly, slowly, slowly change to light as it starts going around this curve. So in other words, it's going to do the same thing that this value scale did right here, except much bigger. So now I'm going to get as much paint as I can, get all that water out, get as much paint as I can, get as dark as you possibly can, and over here put a lot of paint. Yeah, a lot. If you can, grab some more. There we go. Nice and dark. Now, water. No more paint. I'm going to lighten this up as I come across. Now, more water. I'm going to lighten this up as I come across here. And you can even leave this side white. Remember, with watercolors, you can't make anything white unless you leave it white. So that's pretty good. I might put a little bit of lightness here and leave a little light shine here. That's what we call a highlight. Now, again, if I wanted to, I could w wait for this to dry, wait for this to dry. And then after it's dry, I'll get a lot more paint and try to make this dark side even darker. Just get in there and make it as dark as you possibly can. And that's pretty good. And so that's how you make that kind of a value scale. Now, that's basically how you make a rectangular prism. That's how you make a cylinder. Now, the last thing you need to worry about is what if you're going to try to make table shadows? Because after all, you can usually see shadows on a table from where the light is making a shadow go another way. So if this is the light side, my shadow is going to be going across here. Most of the time, I tell kids to make shadows with black. Not a whole lot of black, but some. Now, you're always going to have your very darkest shadow right there. Wherever your object is touching the ground, that's where you're going to have a very dark shadow. Again, be very careful not to let these touch. But there, I've got a dark shadow right there where it's touching the table. After you've got that dark shadow touching the table, grab some water and let that shadow just go to the side. Let it come out and be that little shadow. Let it come out and be... That little shadow. This should look almost like a cylinder going off to the side. And there, done. So that's the basics of how you put shadow on a rectangular prism, on a cylinder, and even on the table. Now, I know I made that look pretty easy and I went really fast, but you can do this as many times as you need to until you get it right.